Uh, today we're celebrating one year since we re reopened the acute care uh, facility here at Mid City. I want to hear a big round of applause for that. <laughs> hey, there's a, there's a timeline. There's a timeline over there about the last year. But let me tell you, five years ago we were in this room. And I remember meeting with many of you, and, and there was a big event just talking about why we had to uh, close acute care and the emergency room and all of that. And I remember saying, and we had a big cheer at the end, go Mid-City, go Mid-City. And uh, we didn't know exactly what was going to happen, but here we are five, six years later with a thriving facility that is serving the needs of this community that was so uh, needed. And so many of the same people are here, uh, back engaged in this program, and I couldn't be happier with the success that we have had uh, over this last year, which has been a year like no other. And I'm, again, so proud of all of you for what we have accomplished. You know, when uh, uh, COVID uh, first started, we had the first uh, patient in, uh, at the general in at Blue Bonnet. And, uh, and not long after that, Governor Edwards and his team reached out to us to see if there was any way that we could reopen the Mid-City Hospital. And when they came here to look at it, they were blown away about how well-maintained it was, and they was basically ready, uh, ready to go, and we could act as a surge hospital for COVID, and, uh, which we did. With his promise of support, uh, we did exactly that. We opened up the, uh, the units that had been closed for five years, and we took care of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of COVID patients. Uh, but we do now so much more than COVID. Part of this arrangement was to reopen the emergency room and to bring additional clinical activity to Mid-City. And uh, uh, more than 26,000 patients in the last year were cared for here at Mid-City. Uh, it's patients with heart failure, it's patients with cancer, it's pati patients with speech and therapy needs, and of course, uh, patients with, uh, with COVID. A year ago, we had 900 employees. Today we have 1,200 employees. Mid-City is an economic engine for this community, and this hospital is here uh, to stay and care, not only for patients, but care for the people who need jobs in this, area, uh, in this area of town. We've also, as I mentioned earlier, we reopened the emergency room, and we have helped close a gap in access to care that was so needed uh, and so necessary, and now uh, we have it in, in place. Uh, you will see some more facts and milestones plus memories of the last year in front of the window, so feel free to check uh, that out today. And while I want to celebrate our success in the last year, we're also focusing on some big plans that we have for this hospital, uh, which is the, the topic of, of, of the, next few, uh, the next few minutes. But, but before we do that, uh, I want to welcome Mayor President uh, uh, Sharon Western Broom. And he has been a big, big supporter of our uh, hospital, uh, not only the last year, but, but, but from even before she was uh, mayor. And I'd like her to uh, come on and, and share some of her thoughts uh, with us. Thank you. Thank you, Edgardo. And welcome everyone. I know that there are some other elected officials here who will certainly share their sentiments, but I just want to start off this morning by thanking the Baton Rouge general team uh, for having all of us here and having us part of this celebration. You know, it is indeed a momentous day for our city. Uh, today we're celebrating the one-year anniversary of this wonderful facility, Baton Rouge General Mid-City. This facility has proven to be a valuable resource throughout the coronavirus pandemic, and thank you so much. It allows our residents to seek the care they need, it works to maintain and promote health, and it has provided much-needed support to our residents during a time of dire need in our community. It has undoubtedly saved lives. And so I can't thank Baton Rouge General, the team here enough, for stepping in with this resource on March 30th of last year. And this opportunity certainly gives our residents increased access to health care, which is a vital component to a healthy and thriving city. One of the things you heard throughout this coronavirus pandemic was the need for access in our community, and Baton Rouge General certainly filled that gap. 
When our residents face health needs, they should not have to travel across the city to seek the care that they need. They should not have to travel for extended periods of time for help or medical care. Again, I am so proud to be a part of the work that Baton Rouge General is doing in our efforts to create a healthy Baton Rouge. And I am extremely grateful for the state as we start to regain a sense of normalcy with millions of vaccinations going in arms in our state and across the country, our health work won't stop. I'm glad to say, Edgardo, that I have been vaccinated and I'm way past, I'm way past my two week period and we wanna make sure that we encourage our sphere of influence, those people in our sphere of influence to receive the vaccine. The work of our doctors and nurses and all of our healthcare professionals won't stop. You all will continue to keep saving lives in facilities like this. And so I am ex extremely grateful for the reopening of this acute care facility at Baton Rouge General Mid City and what it means to our city and to our community. Thank you so much for helping to shape health care within East Baton Rouge Parish, and congratulations. We also have uh, Representative uh, Tape James, uh, who is uh, celebrating his own anniversary today. Is he here? There we go. Thank you, Eduardo, and welcome to all of you. Um, this facility um, is, is very important to me. Um, I grew up about a mile away from here, um, and I was a kid that suffered with asthma. So this facility uh, was the facility that my parents brought me to when I needed um, those breathing treatments less than a mile away from here. So I know what it meant to this community when, when this facility closed. I know what, and this last year has taught us how important it is to have access to, to care and first class medical attention within your reach in your community. Um, my parents are here today. I think uh, 365 days ago I was in Baton Rouge General and they couldn't visit me, so I, I guess they came here today. Because um, a year ago I, I was in the Baton Rouge General room and not a lot of smiling faces, just, just me and and the brave men and women of, of Baton Rouge General that, that made sure that um, I was one of those, those COVID patients that had the opportunity to one day have a testimony. And we've lost so many, but I'll tell you that for my family, um, it was extremely grateful to have Baton Rouge General bring me back. And for so many in this community, when this facility closed, it was, it was heartbreaking because this facility is not just a facility that, that will nurse your physical body and bring you physically back, but, but mentally. And, and I know that because I dealt with it myself being in Baton Rouge General a year ago today battling COVID. Um, so today is an extremely important day as we celebrate um, your fight back. And as a legislator, we, we remember those conversations um, with the previous administration and, and what happened to this facility. So, Last year, when, when I was able to, to come back here reluctantly, because I, I didn't want to come back to Baton Rouge General after I was released from the hospital, but to come back and see all the smiling faces last year to celebrate the reopening of this facility and to stand here again today, one year later, um, I too want to say thank you to the Baton Rouge General team, um, and not just for, for my personal story, but for you, you guys coming in here every single day uncertain about your own health, uncertain about your own family, but, but doing what you were sworn to do, and that's nurse people back to life, and that's bring um, families back to their loved ones. So thank you, um, congratulations, and I look forward to um, supporting the continued growth of Baton Rouge General Mid City. Thank you. You know, and believe me, we're going to call you for the help in the legislature. Uh, we, need, we need enhanced Medicaid rates uh, for Mid-City so we can remain competitive. So we're, we're, we're asking. We're going to go ask for help. All right. Oh, uh, next, Denise Marcel, a champion of Mid-City. 
Uh, I have no idea what she's going to say, but whatever she says is going to be really exciting. Thank you, Eduardo. And thank you to the Baton Rouge General Staff and so many of the community leaders here. I want to first start out by thanking the governor for having the wherewithal to come back and say, let us put the ER back and let's open this hospital back. And I want to thank our mayor president, Sharon Weston Broom, uh, for coming forth and doing the COVID, the first COVID right here in my district. Uh, this is my district. I too, like Ted, grew up in this area. And uh, when it closed, I was here. I, I, it was about me and about five, six more people on the corner with the microphone saying, don't close our mid-city. And when it opened, when it reopened, I was here last year, and I will continue to be here. I fight for funding for this hospital. Uh, we talked many times about the money following the patient. Uh, I love that model. I knew that we had to do that in order to get back to mid-city to make sure that we had an ER where the people in this area could get to, and we have saved so many lives. And because I, too, uh, 19 years ago, this year would be 19 years ago, was stabbed by my former husband and left to die in my heart. And right here in this facility, not Blue Bonnet, because uh, Blue Bonnet wasn't open then. Right here, they saved my life. So that's why you see my fight for Baton Rouge General Mid-City, not just for me, but for others. Had this hospital not been here, I would not be standing here today. And so I will continue to fight for Mid-City and other hospitals because we need them in all the areas of Baton Rouge so everyone can access good health care and emergency room care. We need them all over this city. And wherever there's a desert, you'll find me fighting, regardless of whether it's in my district or not because I believe that people should have access to good health care and certainly to the ER services that I was afforded to have. And that's why I stand here today, because they sutured up my heart. And so a lot of people think that this mark on my arm is uh, from a carpal tunnel, but that was actually a defense mark, so they did this too. You might need to redo this, because it's still scarred up a little bit. <laughs> But I thank you guys really today. You know, my, you know I, I kid a lot, but it's really sincere uh, that I love this hospital. I will continue to fight for it, and I look forward to what we have to come in the next coming years. And thanks from the 26,000 plus people that we have served. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, now let me introduce uh, the Chief Operating Officer of, uh, of Mid-City. Uh, you know, one of the things that we have done uh, to make sure that this facility has its own uh, management team that is not distracted with whatever is happening at Blue Bonnet and elsewhere in the, in the system. So we have what we're calling a, a, a triad, and, and, and Tricia is one of the members of the triad, along with a Chief Nursing Officer and a Chief Medical Officer. So she is, Tricia is the Chief uh, operating officer of that of, of that triad and I think that uh, is going to be a key to success so that these folks are focused on what needs to happen on mid-city for it to uh, thrive uh, and so with uh, without any more introduction here's uh, Tricia the chief operating officer there you go thank you Edgardo and good morning thank you all for being here when we first started to talk about a celebration, my first thought was, where do we even begin? The last year has been nothing but overwhelming, but we have had such success here. And it's been a year that has brought our team here at the Baton Rouge General closer together, stronger, as we came to the aid of our community in our community's greatest time of need. Today is also an extra special day because it is National's Doctor Day. So I want to take the time to recognize and thank our team of doctors here at Baton Rouge General Medical Center. We really couldn't do what we do every day without your tireless efforts, your dedication, and your genuine passion for patient care. Our doctors, along with the rest of our team here, not only care for patients with COVID, but we treat patients here at MidCity in over 20 different specialties. Whether it's primary care, radiation oncology, skilled nursing, or imaging, 
with more people coming through our doors here, there's a new vision that we started to talk about and it has unfolded. There was one particular front story that made the headlines during the height of COVID. And the headline said that this hospital here was a beacon for Mid-City. That really, really stuck with me. Our leadership team here started discussing how we could ensure that this hospital, which has been in Mid-City since 1950, could continue to stand proud as the beacon of Mid-City. Today, we are excited to unveil our vision for the future of Mid-City, or at least our front door. renderings show our plans for a new front entrance of the hospital that will add green space and make the hospital a true place for our community. This includes removing the fence and the staff parking lot that face Florida Boulevard to make way for a large park-like space and a plaza with seating. This new area could host our future events like our pop-up pump and patch, our screening events, and our holiday lights display, and any other community events that happen in the Mid-City area. We hope that this is just the beginning of what we can do here to make this hospital exactly what we want, a true beacon for Mid-City's community. Now I'd like to introduce you to Trey Nelson, who has been working with the community leaders on the future of the Mid-City campus. Thanks, Trisha. I'm so excited about everything going on out here in Mid-City right now. When I first started working here as a community liaison just last year in January, I had absolutely no clue what the upcoming year had in store for me. But I've learned more in this year working for the Baton Rouge General than I ever could have imagined in a million years. One of the main things that I learned is just how important this hospital is to the community, and especially the heart of Baton Rouge, right here in Mid-City. Working with the other healthcare providers in the area, the FQHCs, Open Health, Care South, the Bridge Center, the Baton Rouge Clinic, and so many more, we are committed to this community and investing in this area to reduce inequality and address some of the disparities in care that have become even more prevalent, especially through 2020 and already here in 2021. Our Diversity and Inclusion Council has begun hosting focus groups to learn more about the barriers our community members are facing, and most importantly, try to create plans to actually resolve these issues. Now, Eric's gonna come up here in a little bit to talk about what some of these plans actually are, but before he does, I have one more announcement. In addition to the incredible facility improvements that Trisha Gidry just presented to you, we will also be working with the Walls Project to commission a very large, beautiful mural that's going to be right on the side of our hospital next to the ER. And let me actually show y'all where that's going to be placed. So right over here. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> Where? Right there. <laughs> Did everybody see it? Yeah, there we go. Somewhere in there. Some of those walls. <laughs> All the walls. We're currently reviewing proposals from many extremely talented local artists, and we're going to have a final unveiling in just a couple of months. Our goal is to find something that really embraces the personality of Mid City and celebrates the, the differences and the unique environment that makes this place what it is and what it's always been for so many years and what it's going to continue to be. We're extremely excited about the future of Mid-City and healthcare in the city of Baton Rouge. We hope that all of our community partners are too. So now let me introduce the president of the Baton Rouge General Foundation, Mr. Eric Showalter. Thank you, Trey. Good morning. 
With the reopening of our Mid-City Acute Care and Emergency Department, Mid-City has now become the premier health care destination for not only this community, but surrounding communities as well. Along with pre and existing medical conditions, and as well as new medical conditions, a vast majority of our patients that receive care here face equity gaps and barriers to care, which oftentimes prevent them from achieving optimal health. These are often transportation, durable medical equipment, the ability to pay for medical bills and to provide themselves with prescription medication. So in order to help combat these, the Baton Rouge General Foundation has started the CARE initiative. CARE stands for Community, Access, Resources, and Education. Education meaning that we're not just going to pay a patient bill, we're not just going to provide a patient with a piece of medical equipment. We will also be providing the hospital with the resources and the tools that they need to go out into the community to meet our patients where they are so that we can have the conversations, we can answer the questions, and we can start to establish the trust that is needed to where when people in the community need to come here, they feel comfortable doing so. Despite all the resources that the hospital has, despite that the resources the foundation has already accumulated, and today I'm proud to announce that we have already raised over $50,000 to help combat these issues here at Mid-City. And while we've had numerous donors, I want to say a special thank you to our partners and friends at Capital One and the Milford Walpole Foundation for making this possible. Money is not the only thing that's going to fix this problem, however, and that even the largest medical systems in the world can't combat this issue alone. Therefore, we have brought on a coalition of community partners to help us through these issues. We're very grateful for our friends at Rebuilding Together Baton Rouge and Homes Building Materials, who are going to help us provide wheelchair ramps for patients before they're discharged. Beacon Community Connections, who will help us provide additional uh, non-clinical case management for patients in need. The Safety Place, who is going to help us go out into the community and provide extra resources for our pediatric populations and Top Box Foods, who will help us address food insecurity for patients leaving the hospital. We're very excited to get started, and beginning April 1st, we will be working with our hospital administration and care teams here on the front line of Baton Rouge General Mid-City with an easy application process where patients who qualify will be able to receive up to $500 to help them overcome any barrier that they may be facing. To learn more about the CARE initiative, we invite you to contact us directly at the Baton Rouge General Foundation to support us, you can visit, visit brgeneral.org slash care. Thank you. Eric was very gentle. I, he actually needs your financial support. Uh, so it's, that's part of the Let me just, uh, before I open it up for questions, I want to just spend a little bit of time uh, talking business off spread. I'm sorry. I, this is so important. This is so important, and I want you to take a look at this, because in the past, the hospital has been close to its northern border, so to speak, uh, which is Florida, Florida, Florida. And in my mind, in my vision of what this would look like, and, and I remember one day walking out uh, with uh, uh, John Davis from the Butner Area Foundation, and we were just free thinking about what we could do, and he said, why don't you just get rid of the parking lot? Because I was thinking of just looking at the fence, just get rid of the parking lot and, and, and make it a, a focal point of what this area of Florida Boulevard is going to be. And so if you tie this together with all the good things that are happening along Florida, we have Move VR, I'm thanking for the mayor for supporting, and all of us voted for that, uh, for that tax, because Florida Boulevard is going to be redone, and we want to be one of the first ones to go out there and do something that is going to make a difference in the look and feel of what Florida uh, is, is, is all about. So with that and the, uh, and the moral, mural on the side, I think we'll have a, a community space that, that opens up the hospital to, uh, you know, to the community uh, for things that are not related to just you come here when you're, uh, when you're, thing, when you're sick, but you come here uh, to enjoy the green space and to enjoy the uh, other activities that we're going to have there. So with that, I'll open up for uh, questions that the press may have. And let me go back so your microphones are, there we go. Yes. Uh, so, what's the timeline on the project? Well, uh, very interesting question. Uh, obviously, we've had the first uh, visioning of what this is going to look like. 
we're working very closely with, with our foundation to make this happen, but I think that we will start something by the time we have the anniversary of, of, our, of our opening of the, of the emergency room. And I would hope that within a year, a year and a half of the latest, we will have this, uh, we will have this facility to share with, uh, uh, with the rest of the community. Other questions? All right, I'll do the obligatory, like, five seconds. Great. Well, thank you again for coming. I hope that, uh, that this is exciting for all of you. And thank you, thank you, thank you.